So, I went ahead and I pulled the most important drills of the combine. So, like, there's a ton of drills at the combine that measure technique, right? And but there, there's only you're right there, champ. No. There's only a few drills that are actually quantified in numbers, right? So a lot of like the receiver drills, you know, you watch a receiver go against the jug machine and you're not timing that receiver against other receivers. They're just walking through the drill. You watch watch pass rushers and pass rushing drills. The bag isn't giving them a score, you know, for their power hit on the bag. Yeah. It's There's only a few drills that are actually quantified in numbers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the most important drills to pay attention to and I've got a few players to watch in each drill that probably will do really well or a really named player who isn't going to do well and not to be alarmed by it, right? So let's go through the combine and kind of see what drills are there. So just to name off the drills real fast, you have the 40 yard dash, right? And that 40 yard dash is actually broken into three different categories. There's the 10 yard split, the 20 yard split, and the overall 40 time. Everybody talks about the overall 40 time. But the 10 yard split, so that's the first 10 yards, and the 20 yard split, that's the second 20 yards. Um, no, that's the first 20 yards, sorry, excuse me. Um, those measure different things like acceleration, um, explosiveness, so it's not just about the 40 time in general. So like offensive linemen, everybody goes, well, the offensive line, why do they even run the 40? They run it for the first 10 years. They're running it for the 10 yards. Yeah. Um, the bench press, uh, that's 225 all day. Um, you have the vertical. <laughs> bench press, vertical, broad jump. Yep, three cone drill and then 20 yard shuttle. There's a 40 yard shuttle too, but I just. 60. Or that's what I meant, 60 yard shuttle, but I didn't include so let's be very specific though the three cone drill uh -huh. they have them five yards apart uh -huh. and they're like sh in the shape of an L uh -huh. so you gotta weave in and out and then run back the this is that's the that's the drill that we always joke about that Belichick just puts a tent there yep that's and it. that's how he's gonna get his next receiver that's the only drill he cares about and I looked it up Edelman had like a six nine mm -hmm. that's, you know mm -hmm. if you have under seven you're pretty you're pretty, yeah, pretty elite you're pretty quick. Yeah. I think the best record there was like a six five one, and for a guy that went undrafted. Uh -huh. So he was just a good. Uh, um, he, he probably couldn't understand. You know. If you want to go ahead and look at the list of combine drills, and look at who performed the best, the record holders in each drill, there's a bunch of guys you never heard of. It is. Except for John Ross, because the reason he got drafted so high was because he ran out of the freaking building. Put up a 4-2-2 in the 40. I'm surprised Oakland didn't draft him. That's what they usually do. Oh, I know, right? No, I mean, the, the, here's the, the, the thing. The difference between a 4-3 and a 4-5 it's just who can get to their top speed faster. Mm -hmm. There's no really different. You know fast? Two, three and five right there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, just enough for this. Because a, a guy who's a 4-5, let me just explain this really quick. A guy who runs a 4-5, if you throw him a slant, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Like, a, a guy that runs a 4-3 won't, like, run him down. Because mm -hmm. they're both at top speed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, who can get to their who can get to their top speed the fastest? The 40 is the glamour drill. The 225 is. is the glamour drill. Yep. So, all of the speed guys um, that run the 40, everyone, are, are, you know, they get impressed with that. But, you know, it does measure some explosiveness. Sure. The bench, I always used to say, why don't you just have the offensive lineman, defensive lineman do the bench? Uh -huh. And then never do. But the bench actually told us, some, confirmed something for us that we talked about when we talked about Zay Jones getting drafted was yeah. his bench wasn't really well, wasn't really good, which means if you're a wide receiver, it's tough to get off press coverage. Right. Yeah. Like, can you get it? I know you're not exactly doing this motion. Right. But the fact of, of pushing off and getting out of there. Both for a corner and a receiver is pretty. pretty there's pretty there's crucial. a correlation to pure strength in the best bench press and being able to get off a pure strength situation on the field. There's yeah. a correlation. Yeah. yeah. And then when you talk about the shuttle, it's mainly a. I'd say it's mainly a linebacker drill. Twenty yep. yard shuttle. Yep. What you do is you start facing. So you run to the left five yards. Yep. You run to the right five uh, ten. Uh huh. And then you run. And then you run back. Back. Yep. Okay. So then you, then that's. 
lateral movement. Right. Like, oh, yeah, broad invert, broad yeah. jump and vertical. It's all oh, explosive. Yeah, it's all lower body power. So if you have a guy that runs a four or five, mm-hmm. and he has like a forty inch vertical, mm-hmm. I would take that guy over someone that runs a four three mm-hmm. and has a twenty eight inch vertical. Yeah, exactly. Because he's not explosive. Does right. he have straight line speed? Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. How fast can he get to that you straight know, line? Go back to Zay Jones. Zay Jones is a perfect example of a guy who's fast. Yep. His 40 time is good. He's he's in the 4 4 4 5 category. Yeah. Right? It's a good 40 time for a receiver. It's what you look for. But go back and look at his other drills. He's not explosive. Like he's got, he no. gets, he's just a very even speed. There's no second gear. There's no pull away gear, we say. So I went through and let's take a look at uh, these drills and kind of what to watch out for. And these are some names the Bills could target. Um, so I looked at positions of need, right? So basically I grabbed, um, you know, a little bit of defensive line, a little bit of linebacker, um, a tight end, a safety. So I just sprinkled in some stuff um, to say, you know, some players, you know, if they do well in this drill, that's great for them. You're going to want to pay attention to that. Yeah. Other ones, if this name player finishes near last in this drill, do not worry about it. You would, you would expect them to have that kind of struggle. And the reason you say this is because the combine from when the season ended, mm-hmm. two and a half months. Yeah. So are these guys still working? That's one of the mental aspects. A lot of, of them are training guys? for the combine. Yes. That's all they're doing is yep. they're doing combine training, which is amazing to me that it's become it's become that. So that's what it's become. So let's take a look at uh, let's do the bench real fast. Okay, just as an example. Um, DJ Mac, DK Metcalf's going to kill the bench if he does it <laughs> because he looks like a manimal right now. Um, so DK Metcalf's going to kill it. Is he playing like rush end? Sure. <laughs> he looks like a linebacker. He's massive. D- DK Metcalf looks massive right now. I'm not a fan of his. I, we'll, get, we'll get to Metcalf. We'll, we'll talk to, to him. Metcalf. But um, typically, guys who are real long struggle on the bench press. So while DK Metcalf's going to put up great numbers in, in the bench because he's just massive right now. You look at Montez Sweat, who is the defensive end from uh, Mississippi State. Played great in the Senior Bowl. He's got, he's real long. Like, I'm talking Javon Curse long arms. So, the problem with the bench... So few of us. <laughs> oh, stop it. The problem with the bench is that that's a lot of room to cover, right? Oh, it sucks. Yeah, when you have long arms. It's, it's a lot of weight to get up to that full extension to get the rep count. So, don't expect Montez Sweat to put up great numbers. He's going to be a first-round pick. When you have to raise the bar two and a half feet. Right. Yeah, these guys ridiculous. with the real long wingspans, it's Sucks. not It's not the same. You could say, well, 225 is 225. It's different, right? Mm-hmm. It's a longer distance to cover. So Montez Sweat's not going to do great in, in the bench. DK Metcalf's going to do great at his position for the bench. It's just they're different builds of players in that respect. Mm-hmm. So that drill is going to favor DK. DK Metcalf may put up more reps than Montez Sweat. Both of them are going to be first-round picks, but one plays wide receiver. You know, like that's – it's very, very possible. Um, I, I just, just don't want it to be one of those scenarios that. where it looks like Tarzan plays like Jane thing. <laughs> um, let's jump to the broad jump, okay? Um, so I've got two guys tagged here at the broad jump. Um, Kelvin Harmon, uh, wide receiver. Um, here's the way that I look at the broad jump. If you can find – any wide receiver who's six three above two ten and can jump out of the building in the broad jump, you take him, right? And Kelvin Harmon's six three. He's in about the two fifteen category, but the concerns about him is he doesn't get off the line very quick, right? Okay. So that could be technique, or it could be the player that he is. It could just he might not be a very explosive running back or a very explosive wide receiver. That drill will show you how quick you can do something. It'll show you that power and that explosiveness in the legs. Okay. So for Kelvin Harmon, the 40 is not the big is not the big deal. It's the broad jump because he needs more to than show the people more than the vert. Yeah, because he needs to show people that he can get he can get going straight. Right. So, uh, okay. Yeah, it's he's got he's a great contested catch guy. So that's not the concern. The contested the contested catches and the concern a lot of people will relate the vertical to contested catches, um, but he needs to go. He needs to ball out in the broad. Um, and then you look at somebody like Noah Fant. Noah Fant's going to jump out of the building because he's a freak. <laughs> Noah Fant's going to put up phenomenal numbers. He'll, he'll be the number one ranked tight end in the broad jump. It's, okay. it's going to happen. So, But you know that about him going in. Yeah. So you expect him to perform well. That's a drill that if he finishes in the top six, 
you know, three to six range, you're like, whoa, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. Right? So some of these drills can help players and some of them can hurt players. With Kelvin Harmon, for example, he's got to do well in the broad, but he's a target for the Bills at the top of the second round, bottom of the first round. He's somebody the Bills could go get. Yeah. You know, it fits that tall profile, but again, he needs to show that he, he can be explosive. The 20 yard shuttle, um, Montez Sweat, bring him up again, right? Yeah. The, the 20 yard shuttle is to show that lateral quickness and that ability to stop and start. Sweat will put up good numbers in that. So yeah. while he's going to be bad in, in the in the bench press, he's going to put up good numbers in the 20 yard shuttle. He's got great lower body control, so he should he should have no problem yeah, stopping that's and starting. That's, that's why, I mean, because you, you can increase the strength of a guy. Right. Right. Speed's hard to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you could increase the, the speed, but it's just it's just tougher mm -hmm. to try to do that. Sure. All right, we want to increase your bench. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, it's all about functional strength too. I know a bunch of guys who who couldn't put up 225. Who yeah. Were some of the best athletes ever on the field. Oh, I, I, I knew guys that put up 225 about 20 times. Right. Couldn't walk and chew gum. Let's jump to the vertical. Um, Dramont really? you Jones. Really? You just jump to the vertical. Hey, man, I do what I can. <laughs> uh, Dramont Jones from Ohio State. He's a DT, and he's sub 300 pounds. So you may say, Paul, why is the vertical important? Well, at a DT, sub 300 pounds, he's a guy that can play defensive end in a 4-3 scheme. So the vert, because he's been in the mess all season, <clears throat> right, the vert's going to show how explosive he could be to possibly move out to be an edge, to be an edge in a 4-3. So to Dramont, to Dramont, jo or, yeah, Dramont Jones, that vertical is going to show whether you can slip him outside of the defensive end. Like the tape tells you one thing, but the combine really does tell you something else. These guys have to perform well in certain drills. If he wants to be anything other than an undersized defensive tackle, he's got to perform in the vertical. He's got to. Because um, he had two options. He could either put weight on, yeah, or you can stay where you are and show how explosive you are. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, I mean, if he checks in at 340, we know which direction he's going. But right now, he's, he's sub 300 pounds. Um, and the Bills, again, are looking for guys who could fit along that defensive front. Yeah. They might be looking for another guy who could slide in all over the line. Dramon Jones can do that. But the vertical will tell you whether it'll really be feasible to put him in a defensive end. The three-cone drill... Nikhil Harry from Arizona State, um, he could put, uh, he could fly up boards if he puts up a decent number. Now, the reason the three cone drill is important, Mario already talked about it, um, change of direction, right? And that's kind of the concern with him is that um, he's not totally quick twitch enough, right? So he's got to be a little bit quicker. You have very fast feet for somebody his size, but it's that change of direction that. I've seen people be a little concerned about. So that drill could separate him. It could really push him into the top three wide receiver talk if he performs really well in that yep. drill. Um, the three cone drill also does something that you didn't mention. And it talks about a, the bend of a defensive end. Like it talks about their flexibility. Mm -hmm. So a three cone drill isn't just an offensive drill. It's also for defensive players. So it's gonna show you the bend of a defensive end. And um, that's an important drill to pay attention to. Uh, Jalen Ferguson from Louisiana Tech, again, people are concerned about his bend. Is, is he flexible enough to really play as an edge rusher? Um, that drill will tell you whether he is or not. Um, and the last one is the 40. Um, looking at it from the 40 yard, from the 10 to the 20 to the 40. Um, in the 10 yard, Jonah Williams and Andre Dillard, Ooh. right? You got to see, you got to see what they can do in the 10 yard split at the 40. You got to pay attention to to tackle. Yeah, like and the Bills have to pay. They have to look at tackles this season, and that first ten yard split of the forty is going to be so critical, knowing how quick somebody can get off the ball. That's what it's there for. I like more. Tackles. Yeah, I know the tackles. I understand. I I think more defensive tackles in the ten yard split is is more because they're always moving forward. Okay. They're even though they do move sure. side to side, they're always moving forward. I would I would put more attention on the guards and the tackles in the twenty yard shuttle than I would the forty, mm -hmm. because you're m more often than not going to be doing that. Sure. sure. So, how can he move side to side? That's all I want to know. I want to know what I want to know what Dawkins' number numbers was on the twenty yard shuttle. Yeah, I guess I I don't remember them being spectacular, but I just uh -uh. don't remember. Uh -uh. I just don't remember. Um, I remember watching film on Dawkins and going, "Well, he's going to play guard." That's a, that's a, he's a solid guard. 
And then the 40 yard dash, uh, one kid that could fly up draft boards if his speed is, um, if he can settle people with the 40 time, um, is JJ Arsenga Whiteside. You always have the one guy that has Stanford. the best name. But he's from ever. Stanford, so. So? I'm just saying. Um, yeah, keep, keep it up here. Um, concern with him is, is the long speed, right? Yes. So the 40 tell, certainly tells you that. But the combines are so much fun to me because all these little drills, it's all about the little nuances of each drill and what they're really there for. You don't want top performers in each drill. Some people are just going to be naturally better at drills than others. Some mm -hmm. positions are going to perform better at certain drills than other positions. Some guys are just freak athletes. It doesn't mean that they're a first-round pick. You know, like, no offense, a perfect example. He's going to jump out of the building because the guy's a freak. Yeah. You know, that broad jump's going to be absurd. It'll be totally absurd. But does a good... How many times do you see a guy run a route by jumping a broad jump? No. doesn't happen. I mean, there are guys that didn't even... Didn't even weren't even on any radars. They're some of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone talked about Jerry Rice's speed. Right. He had a 4.6 or something, 4.5, 4.6. Yeah. It's, Try catching them. Right. Well, again, you know, the combine is just an opportunity to take what you know in film and say, this is what we think this player's weakness is, and then put them in an environment where you're testing that one particular skill outside of, you know, combat, out, off the field. You know, they're, they're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah. So it's your opportunity to really test that and go to the senior bowl and watch these guys and say, okay, I like this kid, but flexibility is a little bit of a concern. We don't get the opportunity to work them out, so let's see, you know, What's his three cone shuttle drill at the combine? You left out a, a key component to the combine. What? What did I forget? The Wonderlick. Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. It is not. It, it's useless. It is as useless as useless gets. You got <laughs> new balances on? Yeah, I'm over 35. Of course I own a pair of new balances. You've been rocking the new balance for a while. I hate you. <laughs>